Hey, this is Marshall with Slick Tools. Today I'm going to show you how to install Animal Guard on a rooftop solar array. This method's called the rail mount method, and it works great because it's super cost effective, it's durable, and it works just as well if you're a professional installer or a homeowner trying to do it yourself. Animal Guard, or AG for short, is a barrier placed around the array to keep rodents, birds, and debris from getting underneath the panels. Now, if you're a homeowner or installer trying to decide if you really need Animal Guard or not, head to slicktoolsllc.com for some great information to help you figure that out. In short, for the vast majority of systems, the answer is yes. An installer who knows what they're doing and follows the method we're about to show you can do this so quickly and cheaply that it's a no-brainer to protect your system. We'll be installing Animal Guard on an array mounted to a composite shingle roof with a rail-based wrapping system. First, we'll measure the PV array and get a hold of the tools and materials needed for the job. Then we'll bend wire mesh into rigid C-shaped channels and bring them up to the roof. We'll make our way around the array, attaching the mesh to the rails as we go. With a few finishing touches, we'll be left with a durable, discrete pest barrier that'll last the life of the PV system. To size the animal guard material, we'll need to know the roof to array gap size. Check a couple locations around the array. You can ignore isolated areas where the gap gets extra small, which is common near peaks and valleys. If you don't have good roof access, just take your best guess. You don't need an accurate measurement at this stage. Estimate the perimeter length of the whole array. There's no need to get on the roof. Use the system design drawing or estimate based on the panel dimensions and layout. If you're a professional, you won't end up worrying about the exact measurements for each job because you'll keep an inventory of different wire mesh sizes on hand. You'll learn the characteristic gap size of each racking system. For example, our demo system uses Iron Ridge XR100, which always has a four to six inch gap size. Okay, let's talk materials. We won't go into vendor recommendations in this video, but you can find those on our website. First, the wire mesh. It should be made of galvanized plastic coated steel and have half inch openings. The mesh comes in rolls of various widths, six and eight inch are the most common. The mesh should be at least two inches wider than the roof to array gap. For example, our 4.5 inch roof to array gap demands at least 6.5 inch mesh, so we round up to eight inches. As for the amount of mesh, plan to use a length equal to your array perimeter plus 20%. The perimeter on our job is 90 feet, plus 20% puts us just over 100, so we'll bring 200 foot rolls to the job. Next, let's talk fasteners. We'll use three quarter inch stainless steel self-drilling screws, also known as tech screws, combined with fender washers, which are three quarters of an inch in diameter. You'll average about one screw and washer per six feet of array perimeter. But keep plenty of extra on hand. They're cheap and there's nothing worse than running out. You'll need zip ties and we recommend stainless ones because no plastic zip tie, even one claiming to be UV resistant, will last 25 years in the sun. 11 inch zip ties will cover every situation. Order the same number of zip ties as you did screws. If you're a professional installer, you might want to invest in a semi-automatic hog ring gun, which is the fastest way to join sections of wire mesh. Another option that's cheaper for one-off jobs is to just use more zip ties. We'll demonstrate both. You'll use about one hog ring for every two feet of array perimeter, or one extra zip tie per four feet of perimeter. You can find many of those materials pre-painted black, and the pros should definitely seek those out. Otherwise, have a can of black spray paint on hand to hide all that shiny stainless steel. Let's talk about tools. You'll definitely need tin snips, a cordless drill or impact driver with a 5 16 nut setter bit, a tape measure, eye protection and gloves, and a fall protection system. Professionals can get the job done faster with these optional tools. A special 5 16 nut setter made for gripping stainless screws, an extension shaft for the impact driver, the hog ring tool mentioned earlier, and the Slick Tools AG Bender, which is a major upgrade over the 2x4. So with a few basic tools and about 100 bucks in materials, we're ready to start installing. Let's head to the job site. So we're going to start by bending the wire mesh into channels. This bending step is the key to the rail mount method. A C channel is much more rigid and durable than a flat piece of wire mesh. It can go for longer spans between attachment points and it'll resist being pulled out by curious animals, wind, and snow. We're going to cut our wire mesh into 10-foot pieces and bend each piece twice lengthwise to form the C-channel. 
We want the middle portion of the profile to be about a half inch smaller than the roof to array gap. If you haven't been on the roof yet, now's the time to hop up there and get an accurate measurement of the gap. We measured a gap of around four and a half inches, so we'll shoot for a profile width of four inches. We're starting with a wire mesh that is eight inches wide, so we'll put our bends two inches in from each edge, leaving four inches in the middle. Instead of a 90 degree bend, shoot for 70 to 80 degrees. This will give the channel a nice snug fit between the roof and the array. Pros should consider investing in an AG bender, which makes the bending step super quick. You can check out the bender in its separate instruction video at slicktoolsllc.com. If you're just doing a one-off job, you can bend the mesh manually. Just cut the roll into 10 foot pieces and bend with your fingers over a two x four or other hard edge. Manual bending is rough on your wrists and forearms, so take breaks or trade off with a partner. Stack up the wire mesh channels and put them on the roof. Before you install the mesh, do a final check under the array for dangling wires, debris, or other issues. So one nice thing about the rail mount method is that if a service technician has to come later, lift up a panel, fix something, and put it back, they don't have to mess with the animal guard. That's because we're only attaching to the rails, not to the panels themselves. Pick any location where a rail extends outside the array to start installing. Use tin snips to cut a tab into the corner of a piece of wire mesh. Hold the channel near where it will be installed and note the location of the next feature. Here we have another rail penetration, so we'll cut another tab. Whenever possible, cut tabs so they sit on the uphill side of the rail and are hidden when viewed from the ground. If you get to a corner, cut both the upper and lower flanges. For outside corners, bend the flanges inward on one side so that the other flanges can fold over them. Before installing the channel, run your finger under the mod frames to check for wire clips. To avoid accidentally popping the wire clips off when you push the mesh into place, bend the flange out of the way in that one spot. Push the channel into place, starting at one side and working your way across. The middle portion of the channel should be flush with the edge of the array. Don't push it in too far or you could scratch the panel back sheets. Use a self-tapping screw and fender washer to secure each tab to its rail. To secure the loose corner of wire mesh opposite each tab, use a zip tie to bind the two corners together. This can be time consuming, but it makes a big difference in securing a system against a determined squirrel or raccoon. If the wire mesh runs more than eight feet without any rails to attach to, it's time to add a return. To build a return, cut and bend a tab, add a corner, and bend the flanges in to form a tube. The length of the return should be such that it spans diagonally between the rail and the array edge. Push the channel into position, then reach under the array to screw the return into the rail. I'm not gonna lie, this takes a little practice. Two things will make this much easier. First, a bit extension for reaching under the array. And second, one of the special screw gripping nut setters we've recommended on our website. Quality stainless screws are non-magnetic, so they'll fall out of a typical magnetic nut setter. Overlap the next channel with the previous one by at least six inches. Stitch unions together using at least four hog rings or two zip ties. Put a bend in the zip tie so that you can thread it in and out. Keep working your way around the array, installing 10-foot channels. Make cutouts around penetrations, such as conduit or vents, but make sure the fit is tight and use hog rings or zip ties as needed to secure loose corners. It never hurts to add extra support to sections of animal guard that will be highly visible from the ground or which will be extra exposed to weather. Strengthen these areas by using longer overlaps at unions and reducing the spacing between returns. When you're done, go back with a can of spray paint to hit any exposed fasteners or zip ties that might stand out and look ugly. Of course, don't allow any overspray onto the array. If it's super windy, you might want to skip this step. Nice work, it's time to pack up and head out. The rail mount method won't work for every roof type and racking system out there, but the tools, materials, and method are a good starting point. For example, on a railless system, there are no rails to mount to, but however you choose to attach the mesh, it'll be stronger and more professional looking if it's bent into a C or L channel. If you're wondering how to handle other roof types or racking systems or where to buy materials, 
head to slicktoolsllc.com. Finally, I'd like to thank Sam Mason and Surendra Tapa, who pioneered the rail mount method at Namaste Solar back in 2008. Thanks for watching and good luck out there.